Hello, my name is Nabil Dabar. I'm a faculty in the Department of Leukemia at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And it's a pleasure today to speak to you on the progress and new treatment options to improve outcomes in FLT3 mutated acute myeloid leukemia. So just to give a brief update, uh, most of you are aware, but maybe for some of the residents, fellows listening, FLT3 mutated AML is one of the most aggressive subtypes of acute myeloid leukemia. The FLT3 mutation is a driver mutation. It's seen in about 30 to 35% of newly diagnosed acute myeloid leukemia and is more common in younger patients than in older patients. Uh, it usually patients who have this mutation present with a very proliferative type of AML, elevated white count, high bone marrow blast, uh, spontaneous tumor lysis, often with organ involvement and infiltration. And historically, this has been one of the highest risk adverse features in a patient with acute myeloid leukemia, along with TP53 and adverse or complex cytogenetics. Now, the good thing is that in the last 20 years, since the first recognition and publications of FLT3 as a adverse prognostic and a proliferative mutation, there's been a lot of progress and numerous FLT3 inhibitors have entered and been approved with improvement in outcome. So the first one that got approved was a drug called Midastorin, which is what we call a first generation FLT3 inhibitor. This was a drug that was a pankinase inhibitor, it was actually not designed specifically for FLT3 mutated AML, but it was found to have a FLT3 inhibitory activity. And this drug was evaluated in a frontline setting in younger, fitter patients, 18 to 60 years of age, where a combination of intensive chemo standard three plus seven frontline therapy for AML was combined with mitostorin versus three plus seven induction therapy with placebo with a primary endpoint of overall survival, which was met. This study was called the Ratify study and led to the approval of mitostorin in combination with intensive induction chemotherapy in newly diagnosed frontline fit AML patients, 18 to 60 years of age was the study that was, uh, was the population that was studied in this um, analysis. So after that, um, around the same time, we also started having drugs that were being developed in the labs and in the pharmaceutical setup that targeted FLT3 specifically. And this is what we call the second generation FLT3 inhibitors. These include drugs like giltritinib, quizartinib, cronolinib, and even others now that may have even higher potency in early phase one studies uh, being looked at. So giltritinib was then in the salvage setting in a randomized phase three study where we looked at giltritinib alone versus investigator choice chemotherapy, such as flag ida or MEK or hypomethylating agent. And this was a very ambitious study where we hope to prove that giltritinib alone, single oral agent therapy would not only be equal, but beat high dose intensive three drug combination chemotherapies like flag ida MEK. This was called the Admiral study led by my colleague and friend, Dr. Sasha Pearl. Uh, this study was uh, published in the New England Journal in 2020. And the study did show that giltritinib as a single agent was able to improve on all parameters, the true CR rate, the CRCRI rate, the overall response rate, and the overall survival of 9.4 versus 5.4 months, as well as nearly double the number of patients able to go on transplant on giltritinib versus investigator choice. So this really was a very landmark study that showed that a targeted therapy like giltritinib could actually uh, beat any form of intensive chemotherapy combination. And for FLT3 mutated AML, absolutely a FLT3 inhibitor must be part of the treatment. Now, the glass half empty part of the study is that it also showed that in spite of improvements, the median survival was still 9.3 months with giltritinib. Uh, which is better than 5.4 months, but is still far from where we would like to be in the future. So this then led to a number of combinations, looking at combining drugs like hypomethylating agents with giltritinib, venetoclax with giltritinib, and eventually triple therapies of HMA venetoclax with giltritinib. Uh, we have been leading the efforts with the venetoclax giltritinib combination in relapse refractory FLT3 mutated AML. And this data was presented last at the ASH 2021 meeting by me and should be published in the next few weeks. Uh, this uh, study showed that the combination of venetoclax giltritinib gave us very high bone marrow remission and very rapid response rates with close to 80% composite CRs. Most of these achieved right after cycle one. It also has to note with this combination, especially in multiple 
split the AML where this was studied, we do see more myelosuppression, but the very high efficacy gave us a path to take these patients to transplant, eradicate disease uh, in patients who otherwise would likely have not responded to standard therapies. Uh, also, we see that the molecular clearance rate uh, defined in this study as less than 10 raised to minus two was double with venetoclaxiotritinib compared to what has been published previously by Dr. Altman and Levis and others for giltritinib alone. So it looked like the responses were quicker, uh, deeper, and often giving us a easier and more rapid path to moving these patients in the relapse split three to an allogenic stem cell transplant, and then potentially doing maintenance split three. We have seen a number of these patients who historically would have no chance are now alive many years later on maintenance post-transplant. And I do think that in the future, especially for younger than 65 or 70 years, where our goal is to get these patients to a transplant, the combination of giltritinib and etoclax, uh, at least in my mind, would be the way to do this quickly, effectively, and consistently. Now, that being said, one also, of course, wants to see what can be improved in the frontline setting. So we all know that hypomethylating agent venetoclax is a fantastic, highly effective regimen that has revolutionized the frontline therapy of older unfit AML. And this regimen did show good activity, high response rates in flit 3 mutated AML of about 65 70%. But in spite of the high response rates, the relapses remained frequent and the overall survival in the flit 3 mutated older unfit population was only around 11 and a half, 12 months. This was published recently by Marina Konopleva in the uh, Clinical Cancer Research Journal in 2022. So we have been looking at uh, approaches to improve the outcome for this older unfit flit 3 mutated AML because HMA venetoclax, while giving good response, was not able to give sufficient durability. And at the same time, given our synergy, both preclinical and clinical with venetoclax giltritinib in the relapse refractory population, the next logical step was to move the HMA venetoclax with giltritinib to the frontline setting. Of course, we have to do a lot of dose finding because once you add a third drug, not only will it have a synergy for activity, but it could also have a cumulative myelosuppression. And so over the last one, one and a half year, we at MD Anderson have been working on a investigator initiated study led by Dr. Short, one of my colleagues, uh, where we are looking at different doses of giltritinib venetoclax and we found that giving the azacitidine for seven days with venetoclax for 14 days and giltritinib at 80 milligram appeared to be the optimal biological effective dose where we were seeing by day 14, 100% of the patients had no progressive leukemia. Either they were in a hypocellular insufficient marrow or they were in remission. And uh, Dr. Short presented this data also at the ASH 2022 meeting. Again, early data, single arm, and we need more maturity, but the signal looked very good where out of 15, all 15 frontline older unfit patients achieved a remission. And more interestingly, 14 out of 15 achieved a full true IWGCR with recovery of all counts. Now, it does take longer for the counts to recover. The median recovery point time was about 39, 40 days. But what's nice is all those patients, when they recover, actually did recover uh, fully 14 or 15 of those patients. So now the study is ongoing. There are efforts to look at a frontline larger study. I personally do believe that in the future, this combination with the optimized dosing of venetoclax and diotritinib, which we are still continuing to work on, is going to be the way to go. Uh, if we can continue this high response rate with greater than 90% true CR rate, I think it is worth that initial myelosuppression. Of course, that means one has to monitor patients closely, use prophylactic antifungals, antivirals, do close monitoring during that first five to six week period. But the light at the end of the tunnel is that one could then achieve a very deep and complete remission count recovery, and the initial survival signal is looking good. Uh, so hopefully uh, more to come as larger studies are looking at this combination. Of course, uh, another drug that is going to be very important player is going to be quizartinib. There was data at the EHA 2022 meeting of the frontline quantum first study that looked at quizartinib plus 3 plus 7 versus placebo 3 plus 7, showing a clear improvement in both OS and EFS and actually a three times higher relapse-free survival with quizartinib added versus placebo. And I think this should hopefully get quizartinib a frontline label and approval. And then we also at MD Anderson are looking at combinations of HMA venetoclax and quizartinib 
And we're going to have to find out how to choose between giltritinib and quizartinib based on the BLT3 ITD burden, the commutations, uh, and a lot of analysis is ongoing. But uh, sufficient to say over the last 20 years from when we started with HMA alone and 3 plus 7 alone with dismal outcomes, the most recent data sets are showing a much improved outcomes. And in fact, this is now reflected in the ELN 2022, where FLIP3 has moved from the adverse risk group to the intermediate group. And there is no greater proof of improvement in outcomes when we see that actually the prognostic classification score itself has been changed. And we hope in the future, as we optimize use of FLIP3 inhibitors in combination with chemo and or venetoclax or HMA venetoclax, also use FLIP3 inhibitor maintenance, also have multiple FLIP3 inhibitors that we will eventually get FLIP3 maybe even into a favorable subgroup in the next eight to 10 years. That is the goal. And a lot of research and efforts are ongoing towards that goal. Thank you very much.